The Gray-Scott algorithm for reaction diffusion is a fascinating example of how a really simple relationship can lead to an insane amount of complexity. And I really love how something that you would never expect to result in these systems that almost look like they're alive or like they're growing um, somehow does when you scale it up across millions or thousands and thousands of different uh, interactions. So I wanted to explain at least how this starts out working and then potentially in a later section show how to implement it in Unity using compute shaders. And this is a great example of why I really like to use compute shaders because a lot of the algorithms like reaction diffusion or other others were, were developed quite a while ago by, among others, Alan Turing. And recently with, with the ability to run code on GPU, we can run these things at, at a much higher resolution than was possible in the past, and we can run them in real time, making them interactive, and we can make it so we can play around with the parameters and, dis and sort of discover really strange creatures that seem to sort of be lurking out, out somewhere in the parameter space of, of this simple set of equations. So I'm going to start with an explanation of the algorithm based on carrots and rabbits, or carrots and bunnies, and it's going to become increasingly uh, untenable, and so then we'll just abandon that. But for now, let uh, consider sort of a system, a uh, simulation of carrots and bunnies, where these red circles are carrots and these blue circles are bunnies. And, and, and let's say that bunnies really love carrots. And when, they, when, when two bunnies come across each other, as well as the carrot, they are so excited that there's suddenly a new bunny. And now there's, there's three bunnies. So whenever there's two bunnies and they, they run into a carrot, they create another bunny. And another strange property of, of carrots in this, in this strange world is that they don't like to be too near each other. So if there's some carrots that are close by, they will spread out. And same with the bunnies. Maybe they want some personal space. And so if there's these four bunnies are close together, then in the next step of the simulation, they'll, they'll spread out a little bit. And so these, the, these are the two main components of the algorithm. Let's, let's call this, this spreading out. Let's call it diffusion. And then this, this creation here of the, the, another, the new bunny, let's call that reaction. So let's, let's say that this is a reaction step here, where if there are two of this bunny molecule, we'll get, and as well as a carrot, we'll get a third one. And then this diffusion step where they spread out. And let's look at this in the context of an 8x8 grid, where each point in the grid is independently running these two steps of reaction and diffusion. Let's first look at this diffusion step just of these carrots. So in, in this step, let's say that we have just one square where there are a number of carrots. And then each of these squares will then be looking around the other squares and saying, all right, well, let's try to make this more even. And we might end up with something like this, where a number of carrots have now been diffused throughout the grid. For the reaction step, again, we have two bunnies and a number of carrots. And then for this individual grid square, these two bunnies would then react or combine with this carrot to create a third bunny. We now have three bunnies and carrots minus one, and so on, and so on. So now we've translated this reaction step here and this diffusion step here to this 8 by 8 grid. Another parameter of the Gray-Scott reaction diffusion algorithm is this idea of feed, as well as another parameter of kill. And so for feed, what we're saying is for, for each square, let's, let's grow some more carrots. So we're saying how many carrots grow in each square per step? Let's say that one carrot grew per square in each step. So if this were step zero, this would be the next step. This would be the next step. And, the, and we, we call this parameter feed. We call this, you could think about it as the number of 
carrots that are being fed into the system. Another parameter is kill, which is the rate at which the bunnies are dying. So for example, if there were two bunnies and say that one of them were dying per square per turn, then we would start out with two, go to one, and go to zero. And of course, if we're setting the kill to one per turn, then we'd also be killing one bunny in all of these other squares. But of course, there's no bunnies, so we have to not do anything. This will think about that more later. So now we have this system where we have this reaction of more bunnies, this diffusion of bunnies and carrots spreading out, and we're running it on an 8 by 8 grid. We're also adding more carrots every step of the simulation. We're also, some bunnies are unfortunately deceasing each step of the simulation. So it's worth just stopping and thinking for a moment about how that would all work together. Even though this is seems relatively simple, this is basically the whole algorithm, and it's what leads to things like this. So let's run through it once, just, just in a simple single square case. So here's our initial starting condition. We then diffuse around. So we're not going to look at these other squares, but we're just going to say, say that there were no other, like as, in, as here, say that there are no other bunnies or carrots in any of the surrounding eight squares, which would might lead to a diffusion, diffused situation, something like this there's fewer bunnies and fewer carrots than we had to start with because there's nothing around it. And then say that because there are two bunnies here and there's at least one piece of carrot, there's at least one carrot, we'd end up with its third new bunny which I've used, which I've marked in light blue here. And then because we're in this kill step, unfortunately one of the bunnies would go away. So that's, I also, oh I forgot, and then there's also the feed step here so we'd add another say that the, we were adding one carrot per step, so we'd add another carrot. So this is, um, this is one step of the simulation. We diffuse, react, kill, feed. So let's think about how we would program this. We can write sort of an abstract version of, of what we have here. We, we can say, well, let, let a equal to three, right? And so then the, the next step, for the next step, a would equal the current amount of food plus the amount of food that's been diffused, and this, this could be negative, of course, or it could be positive depending on how much food is around, minus the amount of food that the bunnies eat, right? So the bunnies are eating food in the react step, plus the food that's growing in this feed step. So this is the diffusion, reaction, and then feeding, right? And then let's break down each of these. So for diffused amount of food, let's say, well, we could have some kind of rate of diffusion. So we could say, all right, well, maybe we want this to happen faster. Like maybe we want, um, rather, maybe we want, let's say that, that we want it to happen really slowly, rather. We only want to diffuse a little bit. So we, we don't really want like all of this to suddenly get spread out. We just want it to diffuse out a little bit. And, and here, our, our analogy is breaking down a little bit because we actually kind of want to be able to have fractional carrots. So we maybe want to just have a little bit of carrot in each of these. And that would be affected by the rate. So if we had a very high rate, we'd move more out quickly. If we had a low rate, then we'd move, move out more slowly. Move, we'd diffuse more slowly. So, and we'd have a diffusion rate, and that would be kind of a function of this three by three grid that surrounds our point. So here it would be a function of whatever the concentration is of carrots and bunnies in these these uh, eight squares surrounding, right? And so for this. In this case, what we're going to do is uh, let's let's take a matrix where we have these numbers, where the current the current grid square is negative one, and then the closest points or the non-diagonal points are all 0.2, and then the furthest or diagonal points are 0.05, and then let's multiply the concentration in each of the surrounding squares by the corresponding point in that matrix. So, for example, if we had two in this say that this were our current square that we're looking at uh, diffusing, or we're looking at to figure out the diffusion um, sort of out outcome for this step, we would multiply the existing one in the square by negative 1, this one by 0 0.05, and these two by 0 0.2. So we'd have 0 0.1 minus 1 plus 0 0.05 for a result of negative 0.55, which makes sense, because if 
if this had one and then these had two and these had uh, this had one, then we would kind of there, there's ultimately not a lot of food around here. So this would kind of start to diffuse out. We'd maybe lose half and uh, half of this uh, this carrot that would sort of be spread around these other squares. So that's the that's the diffusion rate. It's going to be some kind of, or rather, the diffusion, the diffused amount of food. It's going to be um, some function of this this three by three grid surrounding the current grid square that we're computing, as well as uh, and that 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 output multiplied by the diffusion rate. Now let's look at the amount of food that's going to be eaten as part of this food equation for the next uh, step of the simulation. So in our strange world, every bunny is actually going to react with every other bunny given um, uh, enough food. So for example, if we're just looking at this bunny, it's going to react with this bunny, which will create another bunny. It's going to react with this bunny, which will create another bunny and take another piece of food and so on and so on. And so what, what we're doing is we're doing this, but we're doing every bunny is reacting with every other bunny and so on. So this is actually going to be multiplied by the number of bunnies. So that, that ends up looking like what? It ends up looking like bunnies times bunnies times the amount of food, right? Because at some point we're going to run out of food. And so that makes the, the amount of food that's been eaten A times B times B where A is the amount of food and B is the amount of bunnies, right? And then finally, let's look at the amount of newly grown food, which is, uh, again, this feed step. And so in that case, it's going to be some kind of rate of growth of the food. For example, earlier I was talking about perhaps in every square we're, we're gaining one carrot per step. But in reality, there's not an infinite amount of carrots that you can grow in a given area. So let's let's say that it's actually, let's say that there's a maximum amount of carrots you can have in an area. So let's multiply that growth rate by the amount that we, by the maximum minus the amount that we have, so that we never get more than the maximum. For example, let's say our growth rate were, uh, let's say that we were getting 0.1 more carrots per uh, turn, and let's say that we had a maximum of one, we already had one. So then we'd have zero. We'd get no more. Or if we had 0.1 times one minus, let's say we only had we had none, then we would get 0.1, right? Let me just fix this equation. Right. So that's a that's sort of an explanation of the food term for our uh, for our equation that we're going to want to compute this. Let's look at the, um, the bunny term. And it's going to be similar to the food term. It's going to be, say, bunnies are going to be equal to the amount of bunnies that are already there, plus the diffused amount of bunnies, plus the new bunnies from the reaction step, minus the deceased bunnies. So this is pretty similar to what we were looking at in our step earlier, right? We were looking at, we have the start, and then the bunnies we're going to um, subtract by the amount or we're going to subtract or increase based on how many bunnies are surrounding. If there's a lot surrounding and very few here, then maybe we'll get more. If there's few surrounding and a lot here, maybe we'll get less. Then we'll react. We'll have more bunnies if there's more enough food for them to uh, eat and procreate. And then we'll, we'll, some of them will die. So again, diffused amount of bunnies plus the new bunnies minus the ones that died. And so the diffusion uh, rate will be the same, right? except it will be based on the amount of bunnies. It will be that same grid as we talked about. And the amount of uh, food, or the amount of new bunnies, will be the same because, in fact, the amount of food that's been eaten is also the amount of bunnies that's been created because for every food that's been eaten, uh, that food is basically turning into a bunny because those two bunnies are um, creating just one bunny using one food. So therefore, the uh, new bunnies is going to be also, A times B times B, or food times bunny times bunnies. And then the deceased bunnies, uh, final part, uh, our kill rate is going to be some kind of kill rate times the amount of bunnies, right? So for example, if we're, um, say, 10% of bunnies are passing away each step, then it would be, uh, we'd be subtracting 0.1 times the amount of bunnies in that square, right? So let's, let's all, let's, let's, um, tie this together, and let's say that for some point, 
is uh, the point is maybe some kind of grid square, for example, three, four in our in our grid up here. In this grid, say. So our a, our food, in our next step is going to be a plus the diffused amount of food minus eaten food. So the diffusion rate of a, so the the speed at which food is spreading around times, and we're going to call this the deflation, uh, because that's sort of what it is in the original, but uh, I'm not going to get too deep into the calculus there, but uh, the, 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 we can think of this as the diffusion term, minus the reaction, or the amount of food that's been eaten, plus the feed rate. And then for bunnies, it's going to be the existing amount of bunnies, plus the diffusion, plus the new bunnies, minus the bunnies that have deceased. So we can, just thinking about this again, so for this square, for example, we would say, all right, well, the difference in the amount of uh, food is equal to, well, it's the, so there'd be the diffusion rate of food, so there'd be, there's no food around here, but there's a lot of food in here, so this would be negative, or rather, this would be negative, um, and then we would subtract the amount of food that's been eaten. So that would be one for every pair of bunnies. And then we would add in the new food. So if the feed rate were very low, we'd add the, we're not allowed a lot of food. And if the feed rate were high, we add a lot. And then similarly for the bunnies, we would multiply the rate at which bunnies spread around by the extent to which um, there are or are not a lot of bunnies relative to the amount of bunnies in our current square. I'm saying bunnies quite a bit. And then we'd add the, uh, the new the new bunnies that have been um, created through reaction. So again, this is the diffusion, reaction, and then the kill step where, or the rather not the step, but the kill part of the step where um, we subtract the amount of bunnies that have passed away. So this is something that we would do for each square, for each step. And um, it's worth thinking through how much computing power this would take. And even at a minimum, we can just think, well, how many computations are we doing per step? Well, if we have a grid of res by res, then, like, for example, a 512 by 512 pixel grid, we'd be doing 262,144 computations of this step. Rather, not computations, but we'd, doing, we'd, be, we'd be computing each of these once per square per step. So we'd be doing, therefore, this many um, computations per step. And then if we had a 4K grid, we would be doing this 16 million times. And again, of course, if we wanted to do it in 3D, which looks cool, um, we'd be doing in the range of 134 million computations per step. So this starts to get a little bit untenable uh, on a CPU, which is why in the next section, perhaps I'll talk about how to do it with a compute shader. And I guess I'll just leave you with um, the idea that so this, this while, while it does look a little bit complicated, I think if you go back through, it's really not that confusing how we do this sort of diffusion, reaction, killing, feeding. Uh, and these, these, these equations start to look pretty straightforward. I think it's pretty amazing that that straightforward of an equation results in something like this or in uh, something like this, which, which to me just looks pretty alive. Like it, it, it kind of looks like a little um, amoeba or worm or something that's maybe trying to find food or move around and it has some kind of almost like water or something. Um, I, I think it's just amazing that you can have such a, such a simple uh, interaction that leads to such an amazing result.